हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम अगेन टू माय चैनल फाइस आई फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस फ्यू लेक्चर्स वी वर स्टडिंग अबाउट एलएस कपलिंग ओके सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द जे जे कपलिंग ओके यू ऑलरेडी नोट दैट दिस होल प्लेलिस्ट इज अबाउट द एल एस एंड जे जे कपलिंग एंड दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर नाइन ओके तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल let we see the uh, some important points related to the jj coupling okay so some important points related to jj coupling okay the whole of the jj coupling can be understood using uh, these points okay if we uh, uh, try to study uh, this uh, jj coupling using uh, these simple points uh, it is uh, it will be well understood by you okay so the first point is this it is actually अपोजिट एक्सट्रीम ऑफ एल एस कपलिंग ओके इट इज एक्चुअली द अपोजिट एक्सट्रीम ऑफ एल एल एस कपलिंग यू विल यू विल सी आफ्टर वाइल दैट वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से ओके द सेकेंड पॉइंट इज इट ऑकर्स इन heavier atoms okay the ls coupling as we already studied about it it is for the uh, the lighter atoms okay and the jj coupling it is uh, it occurs in uh, the heavier atoms okay heavier atoms means high atomic number okay the third point <coughs> in this <coughs> the spin orbit coupling or we say the spin orbit interaction <coughs> is relatively stronger than the spin spin correlation energy or spin spin correlation interaction you can say and the residual electrostatic interaction okay so uh in ls coupling the the spin spin correlation and the residual residual electrostatic interaction they are more stronger but in this case the spin orbit coupling interaction uh, uh, spin orbit interaction is more stronger than the spin spin correlation and the residual electrostatic interaction that's why uh, we have written here that it is an opposite extreme of ls coupling because because of this okay so this was the uh, third point right okay then <coughs> the fourth point okay <coughs> so the jj coupling occurs in two steps okay one after one the step one what is the step one the step one is the spin orbit interaction okay the step one is about spin orbit attraction it means uh, because of the uh, 
the 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 stronger spin orbit interaction energy the uh, the spin and the uh, the spin angle spin angular momentum and the orbital angular momentum of the of the individual electrons they interact with each other and they add it up to form a, a resultant angular momentum okay so due to strong spin orbit interaction the spin angular momentum <coughs> s and the orbital angular momentum that is l <coughs> of individual electrons combine to form resultant angular momentum which is called j okay so we can write the resultant angular momentum is actually is equal to the sum of the orbital angular momentum and the spin angular momentum the magnitude of this vector will be given by if you have to find the magnitude of this vector that would be equal to j into j plus 1 and uh, h cross okay h cross you know that h cross is equal to h upon 2 pi right okay so this is the case with every electron okay for each electron the l of uh, the l and s they combine to form a j vector okay <coughs> okay <coughs> where the value of j can be l plus 1 by 2 or it can be l minus 1 by 2 because the spin uh, have a value of 1 by 2 and minus 1 by 2 so we have total angular momenta of different electrons that is j1 then j2 that is of second electron and j3 that is of third electron and so on okay so this was the step number one in step number one <coughs> in step number one the uh, spin and the angular momentum of individual electron they combine to form a resultant momentum okay now the step two okay <coughs> And in this step 2, this is for the spin-spin correlation. And residual electrostatic interaction. Okay. So this is the step number 2. Now the various J's that we have for the different electrons, they combine to form a, a final uh, angular momentum which is called <coughs> total angular momentum. Okay. So we can write as a result of this, 
of this means this spin spin correlation energy and the residual electrostatic energy if you want to uh, know about this spin spin correlation and residual electro electrostatic interaction energies you can uh, uh, study it in the lecture number one of this particular playlist okay so as a result of this <coughs> the individual angular momenta <coughs> of different electrons that is j1 j2 j3 and so on are less strongly coupled to each other to form total angular momentum they combine to form a total angular momentum okay and the total angular momentum will be given by <coughs> it will be given by capital J and that would be equal to J1 plus J2 plus J3 and you can see that this is not just a sum this is a vector sum okay so it will have a magnitude of the magnitude of J will be given by J into J plus 1 and J is called total angular momentum quantum number okay and H cross right okay the value taken by the j will be can be can be written as the total angular momentum can take values <coughs> that is j will be equal to j1 plus j2 and so on uh, the and that should be the minimum value okay up to j j1 sorry j2 plus 1 and it will go up to j1 plus j2 plus j3 okay so we take the minimum value to the maximum value okay you, you uh, this can be well understood when uh, we will do some numericals on uh, this ls coupling and jj coupling in the subsequent uh, uh, lectures uh, we will uh, do some numericals on jj coupling and ls coupling and do will and everything will be well understood okay <coughs> okay right uh, there uh, there is uh, the last point that uh, we should mention and that is uh, about uh, mm, about what, what where where is the transition from uh, ls coupling to jj coupling so we we should write that pure jj coupling do not occur <coughs> very often okay so uh, look like ls coupling uh, that is uh, that usually occurs in the in the elements which have you know least atomic number okay so we can write but but for uh, the heavier atoms which have uh, more atomic number higher electron atomic number uh, they follow jj coupling okay they follow jj coupling but rarely the pure jj coupling rarely occurs okay 
so actually there is a gradual transition from ls coupling to jj coupling okay so there is not a sharp boundary that you know above this you have jj coupling and below these elements uh, this particular atomic number these elements follow ls coupling okay uh, <coughs> okay for example i i will give you an example for uh, fourth group the 14th group you can say uh, elements like what are those elements so the carbon the silicon the germanium and the uh, this strontium and the lead okay if you see the c and si follows ls coupling okay okay they follow ls coupling that is actually when they are in the first x acid say but uh, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, this is a very important point this carbon silicon germanium all these these when they are in ground state all of these follow ls coupling what when they are in the first excited state the carbon and silicon they follow sl as uh, ls coupling and germanium strontium and the lead follows <coughs> jj coupling okay they follow jj coupling or we can say that they try to approach the uh, jj coupling okay but there is a pure ls coupling for the carbon and the silicon so jj coupling uh, the pure jj coupling uh, it uh, rarely occurs okay so uh, this is uh, all about the jj coupling the theory of the jj coupling uh, uh, <coughs> we can see uh, the points again okay so first of all jj coupling is for the heavier atoms okay and uh, uh, what is special about it that in this case for 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 the elements which have uh, you know higher uh, atomic mass or atomic number you can say in those type of atoms the spin orbit interaction is actually more than the spin spin interaction or you can say the residual electrostatic interaction due to which uh, first of all the various uh, uh, the uh, the spin angular momentum and the orbital angular momentum of the individual electrons they combine to form a net angular momentum okay and why it occurs it occurs because this spin spin or this spin orbit interaction is more when it is more then there is a greater tendency that uh, the uh, the spin and the orbital angular momentum of individual electrons they combine to form j so we have j for j's for uh, different electrons right and when this is completed all the uh, the angular momentum the spin and the uh, the uh, orbital angular momentum of individual electron they combine and after that there will be spin spin correlation energy which is actually lesser than the spin orbit coupling so it is followed by this so as a result of this uh, the various j's of different electrons they combine to form a total angular momentum which can have these type of values and uh, at last we uh, uh, studied that this jj coupling the pure jj coupling do not occur there is a gradual transition from the ls coupling to the jj coupling so that that is all about uh, jj coupling and for today's lecture uh, in the next lecture we will uh, study about uh, the uh, the selection rules that must be followed uh, during the transition okay 
so that is all uh, for today's lecture so thank you uh, okay bye <laughs>